little F O B B S action going on. Weird, she's cocooned her like whole burrow there, but I guess she can push up through it. Oh, look at those legs! Poor little guy knows he's uh, he's not long for this world. Really pretty pattern. It's a shame she doesn't come out anymore because like their carapace really rams home that skeleton type look. They're one of the few actually like white tarantulas. And gone. Thing of nightmares. Another pretty lady. My Mexican Regle or Brachypelma Amelia. That little black triangle on their carapace is just gorgeous looking. I mean, they don't get bright red like some of the other Mexican tarantulas, but uh, it's more like a rusty copperish red. She may be in pre-molt because the little sete on their legs there are what they use to kind of feel their prey, and you'd think she'd notice that. Yep. That's pre -molt. So we're gonna let her be. Little baby anathema. So, it's funny because she's one of my smaller ones, and yet she is the oldest tarantula I've had. I actually got her before I got any of my other ones. She got me back into the hobby, so... This is her first super worm, which I think she's big enough for. She's a little freaked out, though. Okay. Maybe a little too big for her. And she did just molt, so there's a chance that, like, perhaps she's not ready to eat yet. You don't want to feed them too early because their fangs are still soft and pliable and if they break they're going to have a hard time eating in the future so you got to be careful i usually go about a week um i think it's been about five days so she should be hungry but that might be too more appropriate size prey is this giant mealworm which she takes down with gusto It's all about knowing what they feel comfortable eating. I don't try to ever force anything on them that is too large or that may scare them. You know, you don't want them to be terrified of their meal. You, you want them to enjoy their meal and, and grow. So that'll replenish her. Uh, molting takes a lot out of them. This little lady likes to tongue feed a lot. So I will just... Uh... See if I can get more of just the tail. Ta-da! That of course is my Carabina Versicolor, growing super rapidly, due for a rehouse real soon. Um, not expecting to grow through into this tarantula. Very fun arboreal species, very colorful, one of the more pretty in the hobby if you ask me. And her name is Marmar. So expect to see more of her and you know really take in the colors because they change so much like that tiger stripe booty, that green carapace, these blue arms like when you see them transform it's really amazing. They are a really pretty species. Now you would never in a million years get me to say which what of my tarantulas are my favorite, but my favorite species is always going to be the Hamurai. And uh, Columbia may be my favorite tarantula. She's just so sweet. Not in her takedowns, but I mean in general as a spider, she is one of the sweetest. 
one of the prettiest. I mean, look at those colors pop. It is, no doubt, a, sta a staple in the hobby, um, or care, if you want to see it as caretaking, but I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. And if you're wondering the difference between the Smithy and the Hamori, a lot of people can't tell. Um, they talk about the carapace, see that gold ring around her carapace, but I, you know what I always used to pretty good success as a marker, and I'll, I'll do my best to zoom in here. If you look at the very first joint, her patella more or less, you'll notice these little black triangles. And those little black triangles are only found on the Hamorais. The Smithy or X Anitha are more of a, a brighter orange, less red, and they don't seem to have that. Those little, they almost, if if it was like a little black flame point right at the first joint, right after that gold band on the leg, and then it just protrudes ever so much into the uh, actual orange piece. And that seems to be the best way I've found to kind of different, differentiate the, uh, if I can say that word, if I can differentiate the word between the Hamori and the Anitha before they're full grown. When they're full grown, there's no comparison on the size. Uh, the Smithies are way bigger, but just a gorgeous species. Everybody should own one. If you only own one tarantula, this is the tarantula I own. I mean, just loving, sweet, I've never heard of anyone getting bit by one. Occasionally they flick hairs, but really just, just wonderful specimens. Um, I'll, I'll dan almost friendly, almost friendly tarantulas. Now certainly if there was a beauty pageant in the Brachypelma world, I think this girl would win, hands down. Um, it's hard to get prettier than a bomi. I don't know if she's gonna eat, I can only hope. Of course, this stupid super worms like to dig. And of course, you know, I try to draw. Oh. Well. She might dig it out, but I don't think we're going to get to see it. No, I really. Super worms are tough. Looks like her last meal up here met a crusty fate. My bony, of course, Ariel, um, not being cooperative. That's something I really hate about superworms is just their propensity to burrow and really make things hard. Now, I'm not gonna lose too much sleep because she might dig it out later, but generally in 24 hours, uh, it's good to remove any uneaten prey items. Um, she just molted also, so I know she's not gonna molt for who knows how long. But um, you really don't want to leave them in there because when they do molt, um, it's pretty easy for those prey items to quickly become predators and, and harm the teeth, so. Okay, so one more. This is Sonia, my Lassiodora Parabana. And she has been growing steadily. I finally found a name for her. She is so much bulkier than, well, I mean, not Karen, my Epopipus mirinus, but she certainly is very uh, food aggressive, I guess is the word. I'm not really sure how else to put it. I think so much so I'm gonna give her another meal just to, uh, yeah. Oh, she really liked that. Look at that. I don't know if that roach is dead or playing dead. She put her foot on it. It's kind of funny. Like, she's like, I'm not done with you. See? But I think that roach was, like, barely alive. I'm not going to pull it away. She may scavenge it. Um, she's so big. It is ridiculous how big she is for two years. Now, see, it's still alive. Oh, 
she's going to get that too. Truly mixing it up with a superworm and a roach all in the same feeding. Superworms fight though, and I think that's why she's focusing on it. You gotta remember, their venom is set up for eating bugs, but it's not super potent. It's nothing ridiculous like you'd think it is. So, uh, and these super worms, man, they got fight for days. Isn't she gorgeous, though? Apparently, my specific color blindness bars me from seeing pink, I've been told. I don't know. I see flamingos, but um, I don't see a lot of pink on her. Uh, they're called salmon pink bird eaters. Uh, I don't see it. I don't know where that name comes from, but... Then again, she's only a juvenile. It's just the species is that big. Like, this is your average keeper, you know. Um, I'm pretty sure they're like 12 inch by eight inch. And uh, she alone will get eight inches from like this leg to this th leg measuring. Um, so at some point she's gonna go in a 10 gallon like Ariel is. And uh, she'll fill it up, actually. Uh, she won't look so lost. All right, I'm just going to leave that little piece of prey item in there. She's going to struggle with that. But thanks for watching. See you next time.